play, I didn't plan to make another video response towards Garrett Robinson again. But, uh, this guy, every time I think I'm done with him, he pops up two more videos that really pisses me to fuck off. And quite frankly, I should like creating an entire series based on Garrett Robinson. The failures of Garrett Robinson, made by the atheist gamer. Maybe, just maybe one day, Garrett Robinson will make a video response towards me to quote unquote debunk me. But I doubt that day is ever going to come because social justice warriors are probably just going to hide in their shells and pretend that they are right. This is the sort of shit that I really, really fucking hate. But even if I don't get Garrett Robinson's um, attention, I would at least get a few subs here and there for making videos on Garrett Robinson. <sighs> That being said, let's just get this shit over with. Good morning, Rebels, and welcome back to my life. So one week ago today, Felicia Day, one of my favorite people on the internet and bona fide geek icon, wrote a post on her Tumblr about Gamergate. She expressed concerns about the movement and explained why she hasn't spoken up about it before. Justifiably, she saw an environment in which many women were being attacked and harassed and didn't want to invite more of the same. We have to remember that as a geek icon, Felicia Day has already in real life had people stalk her, track her down, get her home address, follow her around, and of course she would be hesitant to invite more of that. And of course, within an hour of her Tumblr post, Felicia Day was doxxed. Someone published her personal information online, including her home address and her personal email. This is a perfect example of the Gamergate movement enjoying the privilege created by the psychos within it. Oh man, where do you get this? The 99 cent store? But seriously, you're already blaming Gamergate for this, for these actions when we clearly have stated that we're against harassment. Or did you just... You know, oh wait, that's right, you're a social justice warrior. You don't care on what the opposing side has to say. You just think that you're automatically right because you believe in equality. That's your fucking logic. Well, I got some news for you. You are wrong, okay? And I can prove it. Remember, um, I think it's Sarkeesian? Um... There were a few impersonators out there on YouTube, and we found one of them. It wasn't the social justice warriors who were looking for these imposters. It was the gamer, the people who supported Gamergate. People who cared about ethics and, uh, ethics, ethics in journalism. Fuck, I can't pronounce it. And you're going to say that this is something that we take pride or privilege of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <clears throat> this is something that doesn't surprise me anymore. Yeah, just blame Gamergate for every bad thing that's happened towards a woman, you know? Next thing you're gonna do is somehow link us toward, you know, people who support Gamergate to 9-11. I wouldn't be shocked. If you're a Gamergator, you might be against harassment, and you might be open to honest discourse with people, but there are women out there right now who are afraid to speak about your movement because of the people within your ranks. Why not just start a conversation with those who aren't trolls? <laughs> And even though you're not one of them, you are enjoying the privilege of their conduct. And that is an issue. How the fuck are we benefiting from them? Seriously, there's always going to be a few bad apples within a group. And you're, you're basically saying that those bad apples are somehow affecting you. Some I, I don't get it. I don't get you, Garrett Robinson. You don't want to, you know, talk to anyone from Gamergate. I doubt that you're going to make a video response towards me, let alone anyone on the internet who does make a video about you. And if you do actually make a video response, I doubt the video is going to be well thought out. Because it's rare, it's completely fucking rare for a feminist to get off his high horse and actually start, 
you know, defending his his or her own opinions. <sighs> By now, at the very least, you could at least talk to these gamer gators. But no, no, no. You'd rather put your head in the sand and think that you're right, regardless. And that is expected with the majority of social justice warriors. I've seen posts listing prominent geek icons who have remained silent on the Gamergate issue, and for some reason the posters always see this as a silent sign of tacit support. But I find it much more likely that they're scared. They're terrified that if they speak about their concerns on the movement, they'll be attacked, just like Felicia Day and so many other women have been. But Maybe because they want to remain neutral. Because if you attack Gamergate, you'll be seen as a total bigot. But if you attack the social justice warriors, you'll be seen as a misogynist. Either way, you're fucked. But here's the fucking thing with certain people who oppose Gamergate. The majority of people who oppose Gamergate only put, don't even have a logical argument. They just put us in fucking straw man arguments like what you're doing right now. And if not a straw man argument, then just calling us sexist, misogynistic bigots who just want women out of video games. When, I hate to say this again, time and time again, that we have many, many female supporters of Gamergate. Okay? Get that in your thick skull. By the way, I use women very specifically because hardly any men have been doxxed by Gamergaters. I think that Felicia Day's attack might have been the moment when the world woke up, because nobody knew very much about Zoe Quinn or Anita Sarkeesian before Gamergate, so it was easy to imagine whatever you wanted about them, construct your own narrative. But we all know Felicia Day, and when she was attacked, that felt a little too close to home. Since she was attacked on October 23rd, use of the Gamergate hashtag has been steadily downtrending, which might be a signal that the movement is losing some support. But of <laughs> Oh, 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 right. <clears throat> Millions of people have tweeted Gamergate. And, uh, let's see, by comparison towards Stop Gamergate, we have more than, I'd say, eight times the amount of tweets of that of Stop Gamergate. So, <clears throat> you must be really, really dreaming hard. Of course, some people are still saying that the harassers and trolls are the minority and Gamergate is actually about ethics and game journalism, but that narrative is becoming increasingly hard to believe, and even more so when you look at facts and statistics. First of all, there's the fact that the Gamergate hashtag itself was coined in a tweet by Adam Baldwin which was tweeting about Zoe Quinn, not a journalist. Also, recently Newsweek did some actual investigative journalism and compiled this graph. These are tweets using the Gamergate hashtag directed at people and entities within the controversy. If you can't see those labels, let me make them a little bit bigger for you. Okay, so you can see that Kotaku is getting a lot of tweets, right? More at least than Zoe Quinn. But Zoe Quinn is still getting way more than twice as many tweets as Nathan Grayson and Stephen Totilo combined, and they're the journalists. Meanwhile, Leigh Alexander is getting a decent amount of traffic, and she's an actual journalist, so that makes sense. But she's still getting way less than half the traffic of Anita Sarkeesian or Brianna Wu, who are not journalists. So listen, guys, you can say the movement is about whatever you want, but I like to look at facts and statistics and what I can actually see in front of my own eyes. This doesn't disprove anything! Okay, just because Anita Sarkeesian or Brianna Wu receives more tweets than, about Gamergate than any gaming journalist whatsoever doesn't mean anything. It doesn't change anything. Okay? Because these people, these are the sort of people that are benefiting from gaming journalism. These corrupted gaming journalism. <coughs> okay, as long as Anita Sarkeesian and Brianna Wu or whatever is benefiting from these gaming journalists, attacking a, an individual gaming journalist is not good enough. Okay, it's not, 
I mean, there's always going to be another gaming journalist who's going to just swoop in, be an E.S. Arkeez's white knight for about a second, and then hide behind the shelves acting like a big, fat coward. Okay, these are gaming journalists. They're going to say stupid shit to support Anita Sarkeesian, Zoe Quinn, or Brianna Wu. Okay? It's these women who take advantage of this corrupted journalism. They are just as big as a problem than the gaming journalist itself. If anything, you should try looking at the tweets that Kotaku gets. Meanwhile, people like Total Biscuit continue campaigning for journalistic integrity, and he's actually, you know, doing that. He's not being defensive about misogyny, as so many gamer gators are, and he's actually raising concerns about journalistic integrity and following through on investigating them. We, we shouldn't get all defensive about how your little balls shrivel up on how these women are being oppressed. So listen, if you're actually about journalistic integrity, campaign for that and do it well and thoroughly. Just don't do it under the hashtag that is inextricably associated with misogyny and ruining people's lives. God, you haven't tried to, geez, I don't know, have a conversation with someone from Gamergate, someone who supports Gamergate, someone who's, you know, someone of the likes of Monday Matt. You haven't bothered to talk to Monday Matt, or anyone at that matter. Like I said, you put your head in the sand, pretend that you're right.